On to the second part of the podcast, and we do the part that you guys decide, the discussion, the debate this week, and I am really sorry, whoever sent it in, I've forgotten to write down your name, but thank you for the idea. The top five managers right now in the Premier League, and it's kind of really open-ended, because however, we can all look at it in different ways, it could be the top five managers outright, or relative to the job, I think it's going to be really interesting, and it's going to create a few debates. And a bit of bias. And a, a bit of bias. Bit of bias. <laughs> oh, that means Arteta, number one. But... Um, <laughs> If you want to get straight in, do you guys want to go straight in at number five or do you want to make some honourable mentions that you feel like you've missed <laughs> out on, but then that could... We might as well do some honourable mentions. Absolutely. Okay, then there's going to be a bit of controversy. Okay, okay then. Is there any one you want to go straight in? Because I know who I want to go straight in with. Honourable mention, Sean Dyche. And I... <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> you know what I'm like. Sean oh, Dyche, no. I still think, is a great manager. What he is doing with this side, to even be within a shout of staying up in the Premier League is a brilliant <laughs> job. And I stand by, he, he nearly made my top five in the Premier League. Top five at the whole 20. That's a disgrace. Because it's relative to the, the job he's doing. When you look at the budget, when you look at the squad. Sean Deutsch. It, definitely. If he keeps them up, then he would have ended up. A man is this. playing Aaron Lennon up front. Exactly. In 2022. <laughs> he's getting, he's getting, he's getting a string out of him. Is it, okay. That's not, that's no. not the phrase, I don't think. Get a tune. Getting tune. a tune. Getting a string. <laughs> I knew what I was trying to say. But no, honestly, I think relative to the job, what Sean Dyche does every single year, year in, year out, we have the same discussion, are they going to stay up? And everyone predicts them to get relegated every single year. This is the year where it's really come down to the wire. Mm. But if they stay up again, where are they, why not? Where are they now? Are they... I, I can they're tell you. they're seven, no, 18th. They're still bottom three, I thought. Yeah, yeah. So your, your top five manager is still in the bottom three. No, no, he's not in the top five. I'm saying he's my honourable mention. Oh, okay. If he keeps them up, he will definitely enter the top five. Because I think... At what number one. Not number one, probably <laughs> top three. I'd probably still give him a third. Really? But, oh, because wow. I think relative to the job, when you think about the budget, when you look at man for man, they're squat. taking them down. <laughs> but I'll tell you, any there is no manager that could take that job and do a better job. Because the, the squad they have for what he get, what he does with that squad. Yeah. You can't. He's doing a good that. job, yeah, but I think the time job. has come for them to get as I predicted at the start well, of the season. Just going to throw it out there. And I predicted, and I still think they will stay up. <laughs> so we can. Going down. And we it's can about time. Soon. They, no, it's about they, time Burnley go. What do you yeah. mean? What do you mean? Just, <laughs> yeah, they don't play. But then everyone says, "Oh, it's not great football." I quite like it. It's direct. Imagine like, when it was Pulis. No, but it's different. Pulis. It's different. Yes, because the difference is with Burnley, it's getting in the ball early. It works. But no, I, I do. I think it's direct. I think. Bernie ball and Deutsch ball it's a bad rep because I think everyone says oh it's long ball it's Brexit football it's direct it's actually quite it's a very efficient way of it's playing efficient. hit the channels get Burnley the ball fans were moaning this is Burnley fans this well, is like their I only think, Premier League but experience then I, and they were still moaning yeah. about the style of play saying but, it's boring well what do they want because I tell you now if Burnley got on a new manager and started trying to pass out from the back then they go down oh, yeah. well of course with that squad of course but exactly, given time there's nothing they can do they'd have to go down and come back up and build exactly. a different squad but I don't think Sure, I don't think anyone yeah, that's the problem the investment is needed that's why I think relative to the job and I know this is exactly why this is going to be a good debate <laughs> there's, a, there's a reason that Sean Dyche hasn't been offered a decent job in the Premier League yeah it's a good way to put it well I'll tell you now when Burnley get relegated I think Everton will be knocking on his door when uh, Lampard's gone well he'd do better than Frank wouldn't he oh, so. Frank Lampard has done absolutely awful I had him in my top five Oh, please don't. Do that. I was going to say, for a second, I thought, oh my word. I was looking at the XG. The XG since he's taken over is atrocious. Oh, no, we spoke about it before. Like, it, was ne- it. it was never going to be a good appointment. What about him was going to help Everton in the current situation? Yeah. He did a poor job at Chelsea. He got them through a, a few rounds in the Champions League. Yeah, he failed at Derby. He was he poor at Derby. At Derby. Yeah. We've Easily the best squad in the championship yeah. at the time. Mm. I, I watched them beat us 4 0, and I'm still uh, salty. He hasn't about actually that. done anything of note, and I stand by it. Yeah. He's a, he's a, he should not have got the job. No. I like not. him though, because he got us to the Premier League pretty much. I was going to say, you're going to like him. He's got a soft spot in my heart. Have you guys got any more honourable mentions? I didn't think we'd spend I've got four minutes quick debating one. Just <laughs> shout, shout out Patrick Vieira because he's a legend. That's it. <laughs> well, he might have made people's top fives. That's oh, all well. I'm saying. And, the, and this one is going to cause a few upsets, I think. Bruno Lager? No. Okay. He's my honourable mention, by the way. Honourable mention. Well, it's not really honourable mention. He just doesn't make my top five. Thomas Tuchel. Uh, he doesn't make my top five either, but he's definitely on the cusp of it. I think Outrageous. He's, I think, but then again, this is where With, I, I look at it relative to the job. When you look at that squad, it's too right. He's in the exact position. And I'm thinking, yeah. I'm thinking league-based as well. He's a cup manager. 
He he's a cup manager. He's, yeah, he's never been successful in the league apart from with PS3 squad. Mm. And all managers can do that. Yeah, literally. <laughs> <laughs> Even your favourite manager, Pochettino. He can be Pochettino. successful. He One can be successful. <laughs> but, uh, okay, then should we go straight into our top five then? I Joe's honourable mentions. Uh, you, you should... Bruno Lars, yeah, Bruno Lars, my honourable yeah, mention. Why not? Yeah, is it, again, it I think it's got a top job at the walls. It pays yeah. me to say that as well. I think it just doesn't help with a recent little dip. I think recently... But they can't score goals. If they actually were able to score goals, they'd be in an even better position. But then if they went and tried to play more attacking style, I think they'd leak more goals because that's why it works. Yeah, he's, he knows what works for him and he, he's done what his squad needs to. Yeah. Um, and I think he's done a very good job. Yeah, I don't think you can really complain with that, definitely, for an honourable mention. Okay, then, Joe, do you want to start off with your t- your number five? My number five... Yeah, just tell us why you went number five, just uh, so... Number five for me is Mikel Arteta. At least he's in there. Okay. He's in there. I'll join in and just say, same here. He's yeah, my number um, five as well. and that's a big thing for me because Michael, remember, after the sixth or seventh oh, game... Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, you can mention it if you want to. Uh, yeah, go on, Joe. <laughs> yeah, Carry on. I said that the Arsenal should sack him. You didn't just say that you'd sack him. You were, like, <laughs> utterly convinced. You were like, there's no way back. Yeah, He's got to go. I thought he was a failure. I thought he was useless. Uh, I thought he was well out of his depth. What did I tell you, Joe? It's a project. Keep, trust the Trust the process. Trust the process. Um, just been whispering trust the process I, can, I always process. hear it every night trust Mike saying trust the process <laughs> um, but no I think he's he's turned it around the, we went to the game uh, last Saturday they're a very good side Arsenal um, and I think yeah, in, there's no reason why he can't climb up that top five for me if he continues to do the job he's doing yeah it's, it is very good and the thing is you can you can actually see now because before it was shall I tell you when I've got Arteta Oh, no, what, if Would he's further on the list, then we'll wait till we get okay, there. Okay, we'll okay. Hold it till we get there because we can discuss him That's there fine. with the managers we've got mm-hmm. against that. But I think it's it's the visible. You can actually see a change now. Whereas before yeah. it was nice football and you could see what they were trying to do, but there was no results coming from it. But mm-hmm. now they're finally actually gaining with this. And I do think that we'll really, really work out how good a manager he is next season. That's why he's fifth for me because we'll see when he has got more games. And I know it's a real cop out answer when they've got Europe and when yeah, they've got the yeah, stresses no, on the it's, squad. It's a, how he can work with it's the squad. Because yeah. the one time he's really had a bit of like a heated debate with a player, he's just got him gone with Aubameyang. But I, don't, I don't mind that. I, think I don't he's mind back, that. I think he's backed back himself doing yeah. that. I think that's a massive statement when you've got someone like Aubameyang on, at the club who was, who was on huge wages, club captain, and he's gone, yeah, you know what, we're, we're bigger than you and my plans... I can, yeah. I can and it's not, you. it's not just Aubameyang. He's, based, he's drawn a line in the sand and said, if you're not with me, yeah. You're gone. Yeah. And what that what better thing to do as a manager? So then when you have that group of players, even if you've lost your captain, one of your best players, mm. you've got a squad that are totally committed. Yeah. The no questions asked, they trust you blindly. Whereas before, if you haven't got that, that's where the like you see what happened with the old Arsenal when like Jack is storming off the pitch, you've got Urzel not wanting to play, all those things came. From an unhappy squad. Yeah, I get that. I, just, I think it will just be interesting to see how this dynamic, if he can carry on with this regime oh, yeah. the when, when the pressure's when, on. Yeah. Because it, there will be more friction in the camp and things will start to change when, and you'll have to start chopping and changing the team. It won't be able to play the same 11 every week. That's what I'm just saying. That's why he's fifth for me because I think he hasn't had too much pressure on him. And all everyone said every time they're in fourth is, oh, they're overachieving. Mm. But when are people going to say, well, they're fourth now? It'll be a. It'll be poor from him now if they lose this fourth. Absolutely, the, the pressure's on, but everyone comes back with, "Oh well, they would, no one expected them to get fourth. It's like as if now, if they drop out the top four, it's fine. Exactly. Uh, the, once they're there, I think I yeah. agree with you. I think he's got to he's got to make that he's happen. Got to now. keep it. So it, again, we can wait and see. But no, I, it's still good to make my top five. That's a big achievement for him, Arteta. So I think he should be proud of himself. Well done. Okay. <laughs> Who's your number five then? Graham Potter. Oh my word. I didn't. Ex- that stunned me. Sorry, that's really. That's. <laughs> I didn't know what to say to that. Tell, explain. I, I think he's a very, very smart coach, and it, all the same things you said to Deutsch, working with what he's got, apply to Brighton because yes, they might have a slightly better squad. If you look at money they've spent, and I think it's the way they play football. Obviously, the the results have dropped off now, closing the Massive, season out. Yeah. But the way they started that season, they were like up in 7th, 8th. The football they play is so attractive. It's flowing. There's a game plan. They stick to it. I'm just, I'm just really impressed with everything that he does at the moment. Yeah. No, 
I get it. And I over just... a few seasons, he he's built he's built something. He's got again. He's got like a whole squad that wants to play for him, wants to play a certain yeah. way. And I think if he got a top job, I always thought Everton. Why Everton thought didn't Everton. break the bank to get Graham Potter, I will never know. Yeah, I agree with that. Got super frank. That's why. That's <laughs> a, my only problem with Graham Potter now, and I'm not saying it. I think I think we're kind of blinded by the brilliant football because the results have been shocking. They are four points off Leeds. I think he's stubborn. I think he's too stubborn. Naive. Yeah, but times. Naive is probably a good word. Yeah, or like arrogant. It depends which way you want to look at it. He's trying to. Obviously, obviously, great football the way he plays, but it's not working. He needs to have a plan B. Um, I don't think he's got that at the minute with Brighton. Yeah, and I know you said about the compar- the Sean Dyche thing. I'm still in the back of my mind. I think the only difference is Brighton have spent. They have spent money, and they do spend money. When I don't you look think at, it's that much more than Burnley. When you look at players like Lacadia when they signed in for twenty million a couple of seasons. Mm. They spend. They spend money quite poorly. A lot of the players they get in, like Pascal Gross, for a couple of million and those kind of signings, they're footballer. brilliant business, but then yeah. they do some occasionally break the bank. Very weird transfer policies. They sign a lot of players that you've never heard of. Really. Like, yeah, like Basuma. Like yeah. For pennies, probably. Yeah. Yeah, but that, and yeah. then, yeah. But it, I get what you're saying. I just, I'm not sure whether, he, I think the way they're playing, like it's quite high, high energy and things like that. You've seen why they've dropped off at, towards the end of the season. But I think it's understandable with a club like Brighton. I'd like. I'd love to see him at a bigger job and see how we coped with more at his disposal, more transfer budget, better quality players. Mm. Like, I think it would be really interesting. Yeah. No, I do agree. I'm. I was just playing a bit devil's advocate there. <laughs> but four points off Leeds. Just that's all I'm saying. So I think the, the okay. drop off is huge. Wow. That's why when we talked about Leeds a couple of weeks ago about how they were now yeah. not to get relegated. Well, that's two big wins for them, isn't it? It's huge wins. Yeah. Brilliant it wins. Calls. Capitulating. Oh yeah, that was brilliant to say. I did quite enjoy that. I did quite enjoy that. But no, I think Graham Potter's a good shout. He was one. He was another one of my honourable mentions. That kind of the name went. But do you want to go? Do you want to go straight in with your fourth then? Now we've got you on. Yeah, you got a bit. Well, I had. I've swapped my four and three around. Is this pressure from us? Oh yeah, I'm going to go four. Mikel Arteta. Oh, you bottled it, man. You're, oh. you're pathetic. He wasn't number three. <laughs> <laughs> you knew we'd really react to Is it because we both went in at straight number five? You were hoping we'd be higher with that or not? <laughs> no, I've just, I've just... It's, mate, if you I've want... Just change. If you don't stick with your gut, that's you, man. You, you do you. You do like, you. you, do you. <laughs> <laughs> do you want, is there anything you want to add to the Arteta debate? Do you feel like we've summed I just want to say, Mikel, I love you. <laughs> <laughs> Carry on doing what you're doing. Like Trust the, you the look- process. <laughs> <laughs> to the audio listeners, he looked directly down the camera then as if he was talking to Arteta. That was brilliant. <laughs> My Spanish prince. <laughs> okay, then who would you who would you go in at number four then, Joe? I'd go Conte at four. That's a good shout, yeah. Mm. Great manager. Really. Probably the only time that the Spurs will finish above Arsenal. Isn't <laughs> but um, I think he's he's world class. Um and he will get Spurs where they need to be. Um as long as Mr. Levy backs him. And that's the whole question mark whether yeah, absolutely that is, will yeah. happen. We we will never know. But keep Kane and give him a checkbook, and I think he's I think they're away. It's just, I can't. It just doesn't feel right with him at Tottenham, though. I don't know what it is. It just doesn't. It's like Mourinho. I no, never yeah, understood Mourinho yeah. as a. I never looked at him and thought you're the Spurs manager. I thought that. I think it's because they're fit. big names and it's Tottenham. Yeah, <laughs> with the greatest respect, like yeah. you talk about Antonio Conte and Jose Mourinho, they are two of the best managers in the world. They're winners. It's Spurs. And Spurs aren't winners. Spurs are not winners. <laughs> I was going to say, yeah, they're probably the best losers. Like They, they do it really well, don't they? Sadly. Yeah. Like, Bless them. Yeah. They are cute. It, no, it, yeah, it just baffles me every time I see him. It, I, every time I see him in the Tottenham jacket, it just doesn't doesn't feel right. And, and the, the Chelsea-Tottenham link with the managers doing that, it doesn't... It's again, weird, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like three of them now. Yeah, Vias Boas. There's a, there's a couple of them. Like, mm, yeah. It's, it just, again, it's odd rivals, but I can't say I've got Steve Bruce who loves the rivals. Anyway, but um, <laughs> my fourth now, this is going to vary. Oh, this is going to no. really, really bother this you. This is a curveball. This, Jurgen Klopp, number four for me. Four. You are disgraceful. Again, now, this comes <laughs> back to relative to the job. And I... I and. I, Oh no! So what? What I <laughs> yeah? Explain. Uh, Try and explain finish, yourself because this will be impressive. Because me, Joe, and I'd probably say ninety nine percent of the listeners want to hear your explanation. <laughs> so I don't think, relative to the job. Relative to the job, I think he's doing an amazing job. But the people that I've put ahead in the three, I think, are doing a better job relative to their job. And based on I'm my honourable mentions, Liverpool. You're saying Patrick Vieira is one of them. Yes, yeah. uh, but we'll get on to that in a minute. <laughs> oh, wow. No, but hear me out. So, Jurgen Klopp is not top of the league 
right now, and he could be. But where, towards where the end were of the they, Sam? Like before December, when Salah and the title race was Mane over. went. But it, it, look at the December they've had. Look where he's got them to. But they're not he's there. They're still not there. A league cup. They're a point off City. It's still a point in my mind right now, relative to it's the still job. A point. <laughs> I, I don't know. I'll be honest. But, but me personally, the, the next three I think are doing an amazing okay. job, and I, I get what Jurgen Klopp's doing. And I think kind of the way they've been going this season, I think they've really struggled against quite a few sides. I think they've got quite lucky at points this season, specifically West Ham. I think they've reached really, Crystal Palace earlier in the season. But haven't they lost like one in like 50, yeah, 58 or something, it, stuff it, like that? Yeah, no, but I'm these top three managers, my, my next three, I think what they've been doing is <laughs> amazing. Be, I can't believe you're saying solved, this. I bet they've solved cancer or something together. <laughs> <laughs> God. But no, I, honestly, I just think, with Jurgen Klopp, I just I think sometimes there's no plan B, and I look at what he's doing, and I don't see the longevity. I think when they lose, potentially either Salah or Mane. I can't keep it straight. They lost them for the whole month. That's, I think they've got, when you say plan B, they've got Jota who's coming for Firmino. They've got Origi who can come in. Luis Diaz. Now. Luis Diaz now. Firmino's not playing. Fabinho, Keita, Henderson. This is my personal opinion. I'm just saying, I just don't <laughs> I think you're wrong. Level. I hope you've but, just done this for the views and you're not being serious. No, I'm being serious. <laughs> I'm astounded. The next three managers, I think, relative to their job that they're doing, is absolutely unreal. I think Klopp, now he's got his, his nails into Liverpool, is getting better and better, in my opinion, each year. But they can't be because they won the league and they've not won it since. But they won it at a counter, didn't they? City had a poor season. I think Liverpool feel like a machine now. Whereas mm. before they had a good starting eleven, they had a, obviously a Rigi was coming in. They are a machine. They're grinding out results. They're going far in comp- different competitions. They are, and they feel like a force to be reckoned with. And they are doing a really good job. No, they are, and I'm not. I'm not faulting them. I'm Which not I, saying they're bad. Pain to say it. Yeah, but just I don't think he's on the level of these next three rounds. Just for the relative <laughs> to the job, I can't believe. Uh, okay, as let's I move this, on. See what job as I did Shelby. this, I knew this would get a reaction, <laughs> and it wasn't on purpose. It's just. <laughs> do you guys want to go in? Then is everyone? If you've done your fourth. I've done four. Some fourth, yeah. yeah okay, fourth. then we'll go straight in number three. <laughs> well, I don't like the fact you're looking at me. Do you want me to go straight in? No, I'll go in with mine. Yeah, I'll last. Give yeah. me a break. <laughs> it's a bit sweaty in here. <laughs> I'll go in with Conte. Basically what we've said. Yeah. Um, I think, strictly as a manager, he's probably one of the... Obviously, he's third. He's one of the best in the league. It's just that experience of that winning. But when you said about Spurs and um, it depends like if Levy backs them if, how far they'll go mm. as good a con- as good a manager as Conte is I can't see Spurs going anywhere Yeah, with that one they're Spurs two that squad I don't think is good enough anywhere near good enough yeah no, I and I, I don't think Conte looks particularly happy I know they've been playing better recently and Kulisevsky and Benton Kerr will help Help him start playing his way. Mm. I just there's something about him. I don't know. He Those doesn't look settled. Those at interviews Spurs. as well were bizarre. That one when he spoke when I thought he was going to leave. Yeah. Well, I thought he was going to leave a couple yeah. of weeks back. So I just I can't see it long term. And I think Spurs are so lucky to have him. But yeah. I, I can't see it lasting. Yeah. No, I get that. But I just think because of the world class manager that he is, he goes in. Higher. Pedigree. Yeah. yeah, I think so. Okay, then, Joe, do you want to go in with your... Super Tommy Tuchel is my number three. Yeah. I like him. I've, again, I think he's, he's he's doing well at Chelsea. I think he's doing as well as he could do this season, given the other two. Um, so yeah. the two sides of the Fallen City. Yeah, I think he should be doing more. So I think he's one of the biggest underachievers in the league. I think do what, you? I think when you look at the Chelsea squad, I think Thomas Tuchel's doing a poor job. Realistically, they should be on the level of the top two. It's his first, it's, well, it's his first proper season with that but side. For, with that side, they should be so much higher. When you mm. look at that squad, and and they've got. I know Lukaku it hasn't worked out, but that's not. I, and I always go back to. I, I think that's. Poor management from him to fit. You've got a player who Lukaku, we know can score. It obviously, wasn't his signing, was it? I don't think but Lukaku. If he's a great manager, you've got a player who know can score for fun. S- s- change your system again. It's the naivety. He won't. Mm. He won't build a system. And then Kai Havertz was doing well. What, what I don't know why he's only just started playing Kai Havertz. Why hasn't he been playing him throughout the season? In the false nine. <laughs> Kai Havertz is a, a great footballer. <laughs> and I stand by it, and I and people agree with me on that. That the the Bucketeers agree with me on that. Bucketeer. I actually got some good feedback <laughs> from that. It's one of my only opinions I've enjoyed recently. <laughs> but they won't like that clock one either, so they'll probably got that down in the estimates. But no, I, I think he's a serial underachiever with Chelsea right now. Mm. When, I, I, I like him. I like the way he plays. I like the, his system. 
Um, I think there's some fine tuning, as you say, with with the likes of Lukaku that he he can get more out of. Um, but I don't know. I, I just like him. I, I like I like the way he chose to play football, and I think they'll go on to do good things with him if as long as he stays there. He hasn't got a track record of staying places long, has he? So. And Chelsea don't. I can't, if they don't win a trophy, he's gone within eight months. He's gone. He, yeah, I, I think well, he's that, gone. will that change now? That well, yeah, possibly actually. That will be interesting. Owners are changing. We'll have to wait and see with all that because it's probably bigger issues than yeah, that's at the minute. But of Chelsea yeah. Football Club. We'll have to wait. <laughs> Liquidate. Them. There will be there will be an, a full episode when we know exactly what's happening with that because it's just so confusing. It's it barley, changes yeah. by the time the episode have gone out. Everything will have changed. It's yeah. changed every time, but. I just sometimes with Thomas Tuchel, when you look at that squad, I think man for man, it it's potentially one of the best starting elevens in the league, and that they, they, they're not competing. They the should be competing with they're those not, top two. They should be close on like, the on the same level. I think, I think with that more, squad, I think in mm. that they're closer to Arsenal than they are to Liverpool. In, in as in currently, pr- currently in progr- and progr- progress and pr- progressively anyway. But then you I look at on that level. I think if you look at Pep and Klopp, they've had time to build that squad. We say with Liverpool, they've he's built that squad over seasons and it, to play a certain way. I think Tuchel will, oh, will hopefully get that chance for, you, for Chelsea's you, sake. You, I don't think you ever. I still even no, think with change of ownership, it's the philosophy of the club, isn't it? I can't imagine they're going to change that whole way. But they're still in. They're still in all the cup competitions. They got to the final of the League Cup. They're in the semis of the FA Cup. They're in the was it whatever it is in the in the Champions League. But no, no one forgets the runners up, do they? That's the problem. No, it, when he loses his job, he, if he, he wins those win other two though, he finishes need... third. Yeah, there's no reason why he can't. Yeah, we'll have to wait and see. With mm-hmm. that. He's going to be, but I do. He's a good manager. I'm just, it's just again, I, I just think relative to the job, that's what I keep coming back to with all my points. <laughs> he needs to win a league that isn't the Farmers League of PSG. We haven't got any French listeners, so they won't yeah. be upset by that. <laughs> he needs to, yeah. Like... If we do, bonjour. But anyway, carry on. <laughs> <laughs> But no, uh, okay. It's your three. I oh, know. I'm dreading this. So I think now this is probably the most underrated change in the philosophy of a whole club and everything that's gone on. And we've briefly mentioned him already. But what Vieira's done this season, and I know they're 12th in the league, but I do not care what anyone says. They have changed drastically. They've gone from a counter attacking style where they hit the ball into channels and it was all built, the whole squad was through Zaha. Whereas now they've changed the entire squad, and we've seen it when uh, Frank de Boer came in years ago at Palace. Oh, how awful that went! <laughs> it is not easy to change the entire philosophy of a club and it, to stick to it in the Premier League yeah. when things weren't yeah, going he's well, done really well. He's done. I, I think he's been incredible this season. I think honestly he could be up for. I know he won't get be mentioned, but I should be mentioned with one of the top top managerial like seasons because it's just drastic the change mm. and again 10, 11 new faces in the summer I think they had 12 players leave on a free it was something like that in the summer the whole club drastically changed and they look they look a force they look good don't they Yeah, they're, they're, they're a proper side aren't they Palace now yeah. as you say Like he's got them set up in all the right ways they yeah. defend quite well they're, they're quite fluid attacking they're not just reliant on Zaha like you said there's, there's different there's dangers all over the pitch Yeah, but that was my point relative to the job it's so difficult. You see so many managers try and change things and it go to pot. I think you're right. It's yeah. not, And that's why I think, yes, he probably isn't a better manager than Klopp. That's not what I'm saying. But I think relative to the job that he's done, the change, and surely you can see, sort of see what I'm trying to get. I can, I can. I can never explain it, yeah. Uh, the, just the drastic change. The like, more you think about the, it. The Hodgson ball to the Vieira ball is opposite ends of the scale. Yeah, it is huge. The only thing I'd, the reason I wouldn't have him in top five is like, he needs to do it for another season he needs yeah. to keep improving not and just he can't if they if they do this this season they've had this great overhaul but then they're back down to 16th next season it's, yeah again and that's why I, I, would, I would have had him higher if well if I'd we say do it another season I'd agree with you that he's having a great season if he finishes higher than 12th but I even think 12th is an amazing job because I, under, I under Roy Hodgson that would be finishing, you're talking about that, that, that little mini league of us, Leicester, Palace, Brighton. But they're not now in the league where they're in the relegations. They're not no, in the relegation course. scrap. They're out of a rele- And they were one of the favourites to go down because everyone saw the squad change. Yeah, yeah. And to have 11 new faces to link the way they have done. Players like Ebru Chiesa are fighting to get into the squad and he was mm. nailed on starter last year. You can see, look at sign like Elise and players Elise like that. There's a lot yeah, of young like talent. Elise. He's got three players now in the England squad. Young talent coming through and every, he's just... Yeah, I, I'm a big fan of them yeah. this season. Palace really fans adore him as well, don't they? So Yeah, yeah he's a great a manager. Sign. Great, He speaks so well as well. Yeah, he knows the game, doesn't he? So Okay, then something that's rounded up now, the top two for everyone. Who wants to go first? Has anyone got a bold one? 
I think because obviously I presume your top two. I've already got one of them out. Yeah. With my Klopp suggestion, I'm presuming. Yeah. I'm interested to see which way you do go, because it's, it's which way you swing. I think there's only one way. I'm going to go straight in with my number two. I think I'm just going to watch you two go. And it's Pep Guardiola. <laughs> That's not the same as Joe. Audio listeners, Joe has walked off. He's having a little moment. Jeez. I think right now... I'll let you two, you two have this debate. I will, sit, I will sit back. I think right now, me. Klopp is doing a better job. I know... Not a better job than Vieira. What, what, no, was, what, what was the word you said? In context? What, relative. Like, relative. relative. <laughs> I think relative to the job... Klopp is doing far more for Liverpool than Pep is for City. I think you look at Pep's squad, the money he spent, you expect him to win the league at a canter. At a canter. When you look at it, they're spending billions. Yeah, but they've got Liverpool so are Liverpool off their spending. Mm, yeah. People forget what that. have they done? They've recouped from selling. They're okay. spending big. No, but we say they recoup from selling. They sold Coutinho. There's not many chances in your time when you sell a player for 120 million. Mm, that's not their fault. No, I know, but everyone goes on about this net spend. They sold one big player. Yeah. They they sold one player. I'm trying to think who else. Look how much they spent on their spine, yeah. yeah they, they Alisson, all... Van Dijk, Fabinho. Agreed, but then City spend that on someone to not to play 15 games in the season a lot of the time. I just think... To have Liverpool challenging with, if you look at Guardiola wherever he's been, he's utterly, utterly dominated domestically. Yeah, he's swept up Bayern, absolutely swept up. No one could touch him. Same at Barca when they railed Bot got two leagues in like maybe once they displaced him. Domestically, he cleans up, and the fact that Liverpool are even remotely close, and the way Klopp manages his team with a lot smaller squad. He's probably got 15, 14 players he trusts. He just They go out, they work for him. Competing on all fronts with that smaller squad. I think I'm just a bit more impressed by what Klopp's done. I'm presu- Joe, you take this because this is uh, Klopp's not even in my top three, so I can't really Which is outrageous in itself. I can't really get involved in um, this debate. Klopp's my number two. Um, I echo everything that Mike's just said. I just, I just, and it's really hard to explain it. I just think Pep's above him in, in everything he does. I absolutely love the way Guardiola plays football. So I'm um, presuming then you've gone Klopp 2. Klopp 2, Klopp Guardiola Just double one. check. Sorry, just double, yeah. No, 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 I presume so. I just um, yeah, Klopp's, Klopp's my number two. I think he's done an unbelievable job at Liverpool and continues to do so. And to be fighting on all fronts, as Mike says, the way he does. Um, even before now with the squad he had, when he had that, First eleven, and everyone thought, "Oh, they're going to do a job." When someone drops out of that eleven, um, he, he's, he's made a machine, um, and and it's only good for the for the Premier League if they continue to do that and they they challenge people like City and, and Chelsea, people for the title. So, um, I, I can't really explain it other than I think Pep's better. <laughs> is it as well the style? Do you prefer the style of? I do. I think the way that Guardiola plays I'd football is, the style is total total City. football. Yeah, of course they do. I, 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 they, I, 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 Liverpool will blow you away four or five nil, I think, um, when they want to, and they'll be explosive and they'll they'll beat you at a canter. But City will strangle you and suffocate you one and two nil. Like when they, until we came close to drawing with them at Villa Park just before Christmas, when when they were two nil up, they were absolutely flying, and they just had no interest in going forward. But it was still lovely to watch. They were clipping channels to Mahrez, who's bringing it down out out the sky, and Bernardo Silva doing everything that he does well. And I just think they're a joy to watch. City. So you not haven't. So you two are just going to leave this as a disagreement, and I don't think you can ever really no, because I can it. see I can see the argument for both. Obviously, you know, obviously well, everything Guardiola is like done and accomplished, and everything Joe is like that football is unbelievable. It is total football. I just think he's still. I say he hasn't got anything to prove. No, but <laughs> I think Champions League will be I, the big one. No, I, I was trying to keep it like domestic, but the fact he didn't win it with Bayern with the team he did, and the fact he hasn't won it with City, I just think with the resources he's had and knowing how good he is, and that is because of how great he is that we have this this one little niggle. Yeah, I just think it's a little. Blem- blemish, 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 mark, blemish <laughs> on his reputation. That you look at how good was that Bayern team? Yeah, 
unbelievable. Should should have won a Champions League. And then this City team, again, like everyone in Europe is scared of them. Mm. The money they've spent, the players they've got, the class they do it with. But it, it needs to get over that final hurdle. I know they've won countless league titles and Liverpool have only got one. But I just feel like, especially with now the, what he's spent at City, he almost has to. He so. has to do all the things he's doing and that little bit more. Mm. I think he will. I do think he will. Is in this season, is that? Yeah, I think they'll, I think they'll win the Champions League this season, Man City. It's that I would keep saying it's theirs to lose now. PSG had gone because I think PSG were the ones that everyone and Bayern, I think, and Bayern Liverpool don't as well. themselves. But well, no. that's the thing. But they can go into that next year. We yeah. all know Bayern have got. Yeah, I think it's Liverpool. I think it's Liverpool City. For, imagine It'd be great, wouldn't that it? would be amazing? And, well, and then a... yeah, because then they've got to play each other for the league. Yes. Well, that would probably that would obviously be before. The I think they can get each other, can't they? Is it in the yeah, semis they... or something like that? I think they can get each other in the league. semis oh. rather than the final. But yeah. then again, but then that will be closer to the. Match yeah, when they've yeah. just played each other, so it'll probably add a yeah. little bit to it anyway. Um, so yeah, I think it could be could be their season. And then obviously my second, obviously oh, it's a bit no. left field. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's um, David Moyes. <laughs> <laughs> David Moyes, I believe, is the second best manager oh, in the league God. relative, relative to, the to the job done. <laughs> <laughs> I keep going back to it. I sound like a broken record. This is so funny. The man who's bottled fourth position. It's West Ham. You can say he's bottled fourth, fourth <laughs> position. This West... West. Oh, geez, I'm struggling to say West Ham. This West Ham squad, it's thin. There's no depth in it. It there's is. Some really, the strength in it is not really there. He, he's doing absolute bits with this squad. The fact that he's got it this far in the Europa League, I know we're keeping it domestic now. They're still in with a fight for Europe again this season. And we all question, like everyone said, bottom half the table this season, they're going to fall off. They've played more games mm. and they're still going. And he's got that proper togetherness. You've got that feel-good factor. You never see anything negative coming out of the camp at West Ham. Apart from Kurt Zuma. Uh, but that's... that's <laughs> but he's, he's back in the again, team and playing he's well. Back, yes. and he's playing at the team and everyone's forgotten about it. Mm. Really, it's not discussed anymore because there's this real... I don't know what it is about that West Ham squad. They yeah, all just, get you. you can tell they love playing for that manager. They're all happy. and it, It's kind of like what Moyes had at Everton. Was just about to just, yeah. just better with... Yeah. Probably more quality and a bit. He had a bit more money, but it's yeah. that same like it's like hard nosed football, isn't it? Is. it? Hard to it's, beat. It's proper yeah. like English football, but it works. Yeah, exactly. they, like And they've not. They didn't even spend anything in Jan. When everyone said they need to spend in Jan, or they'll fall off. The fall off hasn't been mighty, has it? Really? I don't think they're ever no. going to maintain. No. But sustain a fourth place challenge fourth and place, compete in yeah. the Euro. It was never going to happen. But the really. fact that they're even in the, I think even the fact they're in the top half is amazing. When you look at that squad. It's a, it's a very small squad and to be playing two games a week and they've done it all season. I mean, Ryan Fredericks is still getting a game and they're still doing it right, aren't they? So the, the, It's... I think you're not doing wonders. It's not, it's not a bad shout, Sam. It's not, it's, it's shout. not the second best manager no, in the league. <laughs> relative to the job. <laughs> but no, I, I think he's he's done absolute wonders. I think he's a manager who we all discussed... Relative he, to the job? Jesse March? It's a bit early on. I, I, to be honest, relative I to the job, I know. I looked. At, you were saying they were guaranteed relegation, yeah, and then all of a sudden they're safe. I think we both. I think we both said, I said they're in danger. I know. I said Brentford. I said Brentford were guaranteed relegated. But yeah. uh, and again, could Thomas Frank be question marked? Honorable mention, by the way, because no, of the job he's no. done this season. He's, Absolutely not. No. If he keeps them up, I think that's a great. He's done a great job. Yeah. Yeah. I think they've been fortunate that there's. Everyone else has been some terrible, terrible, terrible team. They were in free fall. Yeah. Absolute. Oh yeah, no, I, I'm, I was just throwing in the names. They've been gifted have, a win at, at Norwich, and then that kind of saved them, didn't it? Really. I am one of his harshest critics. I'm not a fan of him as a manager or oh. the football they play. But yeah, that's another question. It that's another it. debate. <laughs> but no, and then I've gone number one, Pep, personally. Good man. There's something about it, and I think it's it's the way they do it. I think is another thing for me. I, I love and it, it's very hypocritical of me because I spoke about naivety and arrogance when you look at Graham Potter and stuff where you could say the exact same for Pep there is no plan B and they'll never change and in games where sometimes you think just do you want just lump it into the box occasionally mm. but they, they just don't do it and that's where I do it I know I'm being a hypocrite here but I just love it the naivety that is a big thing and I think that's I forgot to mention the that's that's something that's um that I thought about as well. First of all, the Champions League. Like, it was so blatantly obvious. It's a Champions League final. It's the biggest game of the season. Holding midfielder. You need to have someone in the middle of midfield who can hold, who can defend and like solidify you. And yeah. to, 
for him, the best manager probably of all time to not see that. Yeah. Is is astounding. But then is it is it or is it arrogance rather than naivety? Probably. That's the thing. But then it uh, probably was. It's naive, a fine okay. line between and the two, I've got yeah. another naivety one. Not getting a striker. I think if you went it doesn't matter what Harry Kane costs, go and buy him. You win the league by 15 points this season. They'd have won it already, wouldn't they? They'd have, they'd, like, if you look at all the games, they've dropped points in recently. They've dominated teams. They've created chances. They haven't put the ball in the yeah. net. Yeah. If they have Harry Kane, Liverpool aren't even in contention. And I think that's naive. I think just go and do it. What? But no, he wants to try and play with a fal- false nine and do it. Think, I mean, if he does it, fair enough. But you know, also think as it shows how great a manager he is. He doesn't even need a striker. And he's well, doing yeah, absolute but, wonders. But then if if they go out of the Champions League and Liverpool win the league this season, but these are all if buts and maybe. You if buts I mean? like, <laughs> yeah, we don't deal with. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it's it's an interesting debate. I think you could do, you could argue with Klopp and Pep to you blue in the face. I, I think, think that's, you could. Yeah. The, 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 it's the, close. Yeah. Well, Klopp's fourth, so you know what I mean. Like, it's not—he's not on the level. <laughs> Do you want to quickly both then just quickly just race through your, your five again, just because I know if you want to just quickly just blow it out, just so then everyone can hear it again just before we finish this, because there'll be a clip on YouTube. It'll be okay. clips on everywhere. Yeah, you just can so go, you can as just, a guest, you can go first. You can go as you just five to one. Yep, just go in your order. Yeah, five Mikel Arteta, four Antonio Conte, three Thomas Tuchel, two Jurgen Klopp. One Pep Guardiola. I only say it as well because I am forgetting it as well because we've <laughs> debated for so long. I was trying to remember who everyone had had in the top five, and I was thinking I can't remember. Mike, do you want to go straight with yours? I'm going to swap mine back to my original. So five <laughs> Graham Potter, four Antonio Conte, three Mikel Arteta, two Pep Guardiola, number one Ralph. No. <laughs> <laughs> Jurgen Klopp. Oh, do you think it's funny? We've gone all that time. I was so proud. I was literally <laughs> going to congratulate you on the outro then, saying you've not mentioned United properly, really, once, and you've not talked about the manager. He didn't get an honourable mention because he, he doesn't deserve it's to. number one. Mm. Yep. And then my top five. Number five, Arteta. Number four, Klopp. Number three, Vieira. Number two, David Moyes. And number one, Pep Guardiola. <laughs> I want all the copites <laughs> to get at Sam this for, is good. for having Jurgen as your fourth best manager oh. in the league. <laughs> This is going to be, yeah. There's a reason there's no beer in front of you because you drank it before. <laughs> <laughs> I, I still stand by what I say. And I think I think you can see, I think you can you can try and see what I'm trying to get at. I might not be able to articulate myself exactly with what I'm trying to say. I just think David Moyes and Vieira, what the job they've done. 